That delicious piece of fruit. Might actually be the forbidden rotten apple. Yuck, it's also infested. Cheating, a word that carries with it a heavy weight of betrayal, has the power to unleash dark consequences. In the realm of all cheating revenge stories, few are as devastating as the story of the unfaithful wife of 38 years, who surrenders, to the forbidden romance of a young simp. The belly tingles seem to be fun and games, until it makes her seriously ill. Finding herself entangled in the risk she took, she confesses her dark secret. But she never expected her husband, to be a true, Sigma male. Before we start, put a fake piece of fruit in the like button's fridge, and leave it there. Warning, the following revenge story will be upsetting, to cheaters. My story is from 2021, two and a half years back already. I've come here to share it anonymously, but it isn't about my husband and me. We've been happily married for 14 years. Rather, this unfortunate event involved my mother, a 59-year-old woman, and what she did to my father, a 63-year-old man. So it's not just the young women having affairs. Sometimes it's older women too. They had been happily married for over 38 years, until everything changed last Thursday. My parents retired to Arizona three years ago. They bought a beautiful home along the river and a new diesel truck with a camper. From October through April, they enjoy their time in Arizona, and for the rest of the year, they embark on explorations, often traveling to cooler places like the mountains or the West Coast. They also spend four to six weeks with my family, here in the high elevation country of Utah. My husband has set up full RV hookups on our property for them, complete with electricity, water, and septic connections. We own 16 acres, and my husband, kids, and I always love their company. We love visiting their home in Arizona, too. It's always an exciting experience with their boat and jet skis, so much so that we sometimes go in the midsummer heat. My brother and his family, who live in Georgia, also visit my parents at least once a year. They can't visit as frequently as we do, but they make the effort. Until recent events, I could proudly say that my mom and dad had an ideal marriage. Both my parents were role models for my brother and me. We raised our families based on the values they instilled in us. So you get the picture, our family life was as ideal as it gets by the American dream standard. Now let me tell you about how things changed. My parents lived in a great community in Arizona. Everyone there was friendly, except for this one woman. There was something about her that I couldn't put my finger on it. She just rubbed me the wrong way. Let's call her Josephine. Josephine, a 64-year-old divorcee who enjoys partying, was loud and obnoxious. Surprisingly, my mom hit it off with Josephine, and they became good friends. A red flag right there, as my mom is typically not a party person and drinks socially only a few times a year. Several of my mom's friends also became close to Josephine. Despite her obnoxiousness, they seemed to like her. On numerous occasions, I expressed my suspicions about Josephine to my mom, but she brushed them off, assuring me Josephine was harmless and had a heart of gold. Here's where things started going south. Josephine bought a boat a few months ago, which my dad helped her choose, and both my parents taught her how to drive it. Last Tuesday, my mom, Josephine, and another friend, who I'll call Jenny, went out for happy hour drinks around 6 p.m., the second red flag. They headed to a local river bar on Josephine's boat, planning to enjoy a couple of drinks near the water and chat for a few hours. My dad informed me that around 8 o'clock, mom called, saying they were going to stay out for another hour. She mentioned that they had bumped into a friend of Josephine's and planned to stop by this person's riverside home for a bit. This was another red flag as mom was extending her evening out. Moreover, the identity of this friend was a mystery. However, dad didn't seem concerned and mom returned home just after nine. Everything appeared normal. Wednesday came and went. Then, on Thursday, the three ladies planned to go back to the bar to relax and enjoy happy hour drinks on the patio. This was red flag number four. As I mentioned earlier, mom doesn't typically drink. Yet within the same week, and just over a few days, she was out twice, 
socializing and enjoying happy hour drinks. This sudden change in behavior was a huge warning sign. That evening, Dad and Jenny's husband planned to work on their cars, so the ladies going out was not an issue. They left by boat around 6.30 p.m. and planned to return no later than 9 p.m. Dad and Jenny's husband wrapped up their maintenance work around 8 p.m., and Dad returned home and took a shower. Upon finishing, he noticed a missed call from Mom. Curious, he called her back. Mom asked if he could pick her up, saying that Josephine and Jenny wished to stay out later, but she wanted to come home. Agreeing, Dad drove the short distance to the bar and picked her up. Mom seemed normal during the short ride back home. However, Dad mentioned in retrospect that he did most of the talking, while Mom mostly listened. Upon arriving home, Mom fell to her knees in front of Dad and started hugging his legs, her head resting against his stomach. At first, Dad thought she might be getting frisky for sexy time, but then he realized she was crying. He lifted her up, held her, and asked what was wrong. Mom confessed to Dad that she had cheated on him. He was taken aback, asking her, come again? The second confirmation, Dad said he was in total shock and just kept hugging Mom while she held him tightly crying. Can you imagine that? They had been married for 38 years, a total of 40 years together, and their marriage had been perfect. Now, she was confessing to cheating on him. He had to be shell-shocked. Eventually, reality set in, and he told her to take a shower and that they would talk in the morning. Refusing to let go, Mom clung on to him. He managed to lead her to the bathroom where she showered. When she emerged, he told her she'd need to sleep in a separate bedroom. Despite her pleas for him to share the bed with her, he refused and calmly told her they'd discuss matters in the morning. Throughout the night, Mom was unable to fall asleep, repeatedly approaching the bedroom door asking Dad to talk. He kept urging her to rest, promising to talk in the morning. Finally, around 5.30 a.m., she fell asleep, waking up at 8 a.m. to find that Dad was gone, along with his camper. Unbeknownst to her, he had moved all his personal belongings into the camper overnight, symbolizing his decision to separate from her. He was done with her, a strong response to her infidelity, despite their 40-year history together. Daddy was handling this situation like a pro. He managed to move his belongings without disturbing Mom. Their bedroom has a sliding door that opens to the patio, which allowed him to take all his clothes and personal items out through the back door, load them in the camper, and leave. Mom started calling him, and initially, he didn't pick up. He then sent her a text, stating that as of 6 a.m. on April 9th, they were officially separated, which was that exact same morning. At this point, Mom totally lost it. She called Dad again, and he picked up this time, calmly repeating what he had written in the text. He told Mom he was divorcing her, and until the divorce was finalized, he'd be living in the camper. Mom pleaded with him to talk and give her a chance to explain, but he said he wasn't interested. He told her she'd hear from his attorney once he had one. Before hanging up, Dad said he contacted Jenny's husband. Remember, Jenny was the friend who went out with Mom and Josephine, and he informed him about what happened to Mom. I don't know how exactly, but Jenny's husband busted her for cheating too and locked her out of the house, so Jenny is currently staying with Josephine until they sort things out. After talking to Mom, Dad called my brother and me, breaking the news to us. We were shocked, initially thinking it was a joke. When the reality of the situation dawned on us, I couldn't help but cry. Since then, Mom has been a complete wreck. She spent the last week driving to every campsite in the region, looking for Dad. She's logged over 1,800 miles. My brother and I know Dad's whereabouts, but have promised not to disclose this to her. We both fully support Dad in this situation and want to respect his wishes, as he is the victim here. However, we are deeply worried about Mom. She hasn't been eating or sleeping, driving around frantically trying to find Dad. We fear she might have an accident, suffer a heart attack, or even harm herself, as she keeps saying she doesn't want to continue without Dad. Now, the question we face is, 
Should my brother and I reveal dad's location to ease mom's anxiety? I believe we should not, as dad explicitly asked for his privacy, and divulging his location might result in him losing trust in us. His request for privacy should be respected. We could tell mom where dad is, promising she wouldn't go to him. This might give her some peace of mind, but it could damage our relationship with dad if he found out. We need to support dad, who was blindsided by his wife's actions and maintain his trust. What we need to do is to respect dad's request, providing support for him. I know we must back dad fully, as mom was the one who caused this situation, and now she must face the consequences. I'm just thinking out loud. What should we do? Help me, please. A very concerned daughter. One day later, but I feel the need to update. Mom was in the St. George area the previous evening looking for Dad. For those unfamiliar, St. George is in southwest Utah. I persuaded Mom to drive up to our house and spend a few nights with us. She agreed and was expected to arrive this afternoon. I'll update everyone later. In the meantime, please keep your tips coming. I really appreciate it. The following was valuable to me. This situation is just terrible, and I sympathize with you and your brother. You sound like good kids that love their parents. I think you are doing the right thing by honoring your father's wishes and not disclosing his location. He's the injured party here and he needs time away from your mother to think. They've been together so long, I do hope they can work things out. This is another example of a man devoting his whole life to a woman, only to have her disrespect him in the worst way. There's no coming back from this. My wife and I have been married for 24 years, and as she pulled something like this on me, and I found out I'd lock her out of the house and immediately file for divorce. Listening to your story is very unnerving. I can understand your dad's frustration and anger with this situation, but I would encourage him to take the high road and forgive your mom. It was a single mistake and she immediately confessed. That says something about her character. They've had 38 years, great years together. That's not something worth throwing away over one hour of bad judgment. I don't buy your mom's story, that this was a spur of the moment thing. Where were they on Tuesday night when she stayed out for an extra hour? to go to a friend's house. I bet if you press her, you'll find these three ladies as you call them, hooked up with these guys then. How do I know this? I once was a cheater myself and I can spot another cheater's lies a mile away. Over the last 10 days, a significant turn of events had occurred. Mom arrived at my home looking terrible and expressing that she didn't feel well. We talked shortly, everyone greeted her and we let her rest in one of the bedrooms. But an hour later, my youngest daughter starts screaming for me to come to the bedroom. When I got there, I see my mom doubled over in pain from her lower abdomen and pelvic areas. She couldn't move. So my husband carried her to the car and we rushed her to the emergency room. She was in terrible pain and was sweating and appeared to have a serious fever. At the hospital, the doctor suspected some sort of infection, possibly a urinary tract infection, and ordered tests. They also treated her for severe dehydration. As it turns out, mom had contracted a sexually transmitted disease from the man she sexy timed. Thankfully, it was one that was curable with antibiotics. The doctor recommended an overnight stay in the hospital for mom until her fever subsided and her condition improved. However, after 48 hours, there was no noticeable improvement. Here is where the situation became way worse. The doctor said she might have a drug-resistant form of the STD that has been spreading over the past few years. So they put her on a cocktail of strong antibiotics. After five days, her fever finally broke and her condition stabilized. She was discharged from the hospital yesterday. During her stay in the hospital, mom constantly asked about dad. She wanted to know if he had called to check on her. I told her the truth, that he hadn't called, not even once, 
but that I was keeping him updated daily. My family and I visited her multiple times each day, ensuring she wasn't alone for long periods. However, this made her incredibly depressed. Now at home with us, mom seems to be recuperating physically. She has been obsessively texting and calling dad since she arrived. In frustration, she said, You'd think after 40 years together, he at least talk with me. Hearing this, I was so infuriated that I lashed out at her and said, If you didn't frick around, none of this would have ever happened. This is all your fault. You ruined our family. While this was true to the core, I immediately felt bad for saying this and apologized to her. She just broke down and started crying and kept hugging me. We talked for over two hours and she spilled the beans. Turns out, the guy she slept with was a 28-year-old construction worker who was working a project in the area. This guy was lurking on a 59-year-old married woman. What a douche simp. He and his two friends rented a trailer on the river for six months instead of staying in a hotel. Here comes the dark part. According to mom, she just talked to the guy on Tuesday while Josephine and Jenny were sexy timing the two other guys. Yes, you heard that right. But when she went back on Thursday, she was so drawn in by his advances that she couldn't hold back her belly tingles and sexy timed the guy. I was disgusted by hearing this. It's so disgusting. I never imagined in my wildest dreams my own mom would do such a thing. I pressed on the subject, but mom felt more and more discomfort, clearly not wanted to talk about it anymore, but I forced it out of her. I kept asking how she could do such a thing to daddy, and all she could say is that she honestly doesn't know, but quickly regretted her actions as soon as she and the guy started doing it. Thinking back and telling you this just makes me feel gross. I'm so grateful she confessed to dad, my poor dad. Imagine as she didn't, and she transmitted the STD to my sweet, unbeknownst dad. That would have been a terrible turn of events, a brutal tragedy even. Mom still believes dad will return. However, he's made up his mind, and he isn't known for backtracking. Mom intends to leave on Saturday to resume searching for dad. She plans to comb through all the campgrounds in the Southwest, unaware of what awaits her on Friday. I know something she doesn't, but I can't tell her. Listen to this. Dad is planning to serve mom with divorce papers at my house. He wanted her to be surrounded by family when he does this to ensure she has support. Friday is going to be a tough day, a real rough one. I feel guilty knowing what's about to happen, but I owe it to dad to help him with this. Also, I need to be there for mom when she inevitably breaks down. I'll update if anything major happens. For now, let's hope it doesn't. Signed, A Very Concerned Daughter. A substantial amount of time has passed since my last update. In fact, it's been over 13 months. It's now June of 2022, and people have been asking about the situation with my parents. I hadn't used this website for the past year, but after checking the comments on my previous post yesterday, I saw the requests for an update. Here it is. Mom and dad are divorced, a fact that I still find hard to believe, as well as what has transpired in their lives since. Dad was unable to forgive mom for her infidelity. He's a strong man, not someone who would accept such a betrayal lightly. He wanted no contact with mom. In fact, the only time he saw her after leaving in the camper was at the divorce hearings. I understand why he was upset, but I was taken aback by how quickly he cut mom out of his life. However, he ensured the financial distribution was handled fairly. Mom was treated more than generously. He simply wanted out of the marriage and to be done with her. While this hurts me deeply to write it down, I can understand his feelings of betrayal and disrespect. Mom now lives in a small apartment close to us. As I said, she used to have a lovely house on the river in Arizona, with boats, jet skis, and a camper. She and Dad used to travel across the country in the summer, visiting coasts and mountains. 
But now, she's residing in a town near her daughter in a small apartment. I can only imagine the regret she must feel, considering all that she gave up for a brief moment of thrill. A cheap happy hour, for an even more rotten apple in return. I digress, because I want to emphasize this part. From my dad's side, it went swift and fast, not so much for my mom. Post-divorce, mom's health immediately deteriorated again. She was hospitalized due to bronchitis, dehydration, malnutrition, and severe depression. She spent three days in the hospital, where she was treated and prescribed medication for her depression and anxiety. The medication seemed to help stabilize her mental state and at least calmed her mind. Unfortunately, she was also diagnosed with a potential case of lupus, likely triggered by the stress of the divorce and losing my father. The doctor said that severe stress can compromise the immune system and exacerbate lupus-like conditions. Given her difficulty in fighting off the STD and bacterial bronchitis, it's clear her immune system is in a weakened state. The doctor gave mom specific recommendations to strengthen her immune system and help manage her stress. She has to actively work at de-stressing to keep control over her stress levels. She's been improving over the past six months, but she's not the woman she once was. Mom used to be so strong and in control, but now she's frail, broken, and has lost all her vigor. A few months ago, I managed to find her a job at a craft superstore where my friend is a manager. She's been doing great there and has been commended as a wonderful employee. Hopefully, this job will give her a sense of purpose. However, the reality is quite grim. She has lost the luxury she once had, is on prescription medication, stress is actively eating at her while she keeps fighting it to keep control of her emotions, and again, she lives in a small apartment near me. At 59, she's back to work in retail. Her life has changed dramatically, to say the least. But enough of my mom. As for dad, he's certainly not wasting any time. He seems to be enjoying his newfound freedom as a nomad, traveling wherever he pleases in his camper. He loves the outdoors and discovering new places. In the past six months, he started seeing a woman and things appear to be getting serious between them. However, I urge him to proceed cautiously given his recent divorce of a 40-year relationship with mom. But I've met her several times, and she's very nice and treats my dad very well. I don't want it to come off bad, but I don't know how to put it without making it sound ironic. But she's a really young woman. They share traveling interests, as she is a traveling YouTube vlogger. For the past four months, she and dad have been camping all over the country. She hasn't featured dad on her YouTube channel, but has mentioned him in several of her videos. They really seem to have a great relationship, and dad told me directly that he's happier than he's ever been. Despite his happiness, he reassured my brother and me that he has no plans to marry again. Interestingly, his girlfriend feels the same way. She had a failed marriage once and doesn't wish to repeat the experience. She loves nature and spending time outdoors, so they seem to be a perfect pair. I believe I've covered everything. I want to thank everyone for the guidance and advice I received here. It was incredibly helpful during this difficult time. Lastly, I want to express my gratitude for the interest in my family's situation and for all the thoughtful responses you sent. Signed, A Loving and Hopeful Daughter. That wraps it up, folks. I'm curious to what your take on this story is. As it seems, age doesn't always equate to wisdom or good decisions. In the end, her poor decision caused her to lose her husband, her lifestyle, and the respect of her family. In essence, her whole life had crumbled due to her actions. Do you think our guy played his cards right, or did he fold too soon? Here's a fun little brain teaser to mull over while staying in your vengeful zone. Imagine, if you will, you're wearing dad's shoes. You've spent nearly four decades in wedded bliss, only for your better half to suddenly forget the fidelity part of the vow. And then, plot twist, they confess, begging for forgiveness. Would you absolve them and forgive? Could you overlook this slip, treating it as just a shadow over an otherwise sunny marriage? Or would it be a deal breaker, the straw breaking your back? Turning you thirsty for nuclear revenge? Let Royal AI know. See you in the next one.